The deep sea is without doubt a strange place. As you head deeper and deeper past the epipelagic zone, sunlight begins to fade and the ocean is plunged into the dark. You start to lose most light at around 200 meters in depth, which is where you enter the mesopelagic zone and the bathypelagic zone, often referred to as the midnight zone because of its constant darkness. It's hard to imagine there being much life down here in these zones, but in reality, it's teeming with life, including sharks and rays. Some of the more common ones you'll have encountered before include the goblin shark, with its semi-translucent skin, the blunt-nosed six-gill shark with their extra gill slit, the frilled shark, which doesn't even look like a shark at all, and the cookie-cutter shark, who travels up the water column at night and takes circular-shaped bites out of its larger prey. But in recent years, scientists have started discovering more and more new elasmobranch species down here, and the numbers show no sign of slowing down. The demon cat shark, the painted horn shark, and two new saw shark species have been discovered in 2023 alone. So it begs the question, how many more shark species will we discover down there? Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. I know there's a bunch of you deep sea shark fans out there who are really gonna like this video today. I mean, who doesn't love the deep sea? The shit that we get down there is the absolute stuff of nightmares. Like, really, what the f is that? So today we're gonna have a look at some of the more recent shark species that have been discovered down there. We'll figure out the ways in which scientists at the moment are discovering them, and we'll try and figure out just how many more shark species we are going to discover. If I were to ask you how many different shark species do you think are kicking around in the oceans right now, I imagine you guys might come out with some different numbers. And that's not because you're wrong, it's just because that number is continuously changing. It goes up when we discover a new species and then comes back down again when one of them is officially classified as extinct. As recently as the mid-1980s, shark scientists had settled on what they thought was a pretty firm number, around 360. This number included various different shark species living all around the world, the pelagic sharks, the deep sea sharks, the reef sharks, you name them, they were included in that number. But 360 was the approximate number that they used back then. It turns out in a little over 40 years, that number has jumped up by nearly 40% to around 500 shark species. When you think about it, that's a crazy jump in what is, in the grand scheme of things, a relatively short period of time. The rate at which we're discovering them as of current is definitely exceeding the rate at which we're losing them. Importantly, I say there though, as of currently. One of the more recent ones in 2023 was the Demon Cat Shark. I think that name isn't official just yet, but that's what they've dubbed it as for now. Its scientific name is Apristurus ovicorrugatus. Wow, that is a mouthful. <laughs> Anyway, the story of its discovery dates all the way back to 1989 when someone in Australia stumbled upon an egg. Many shark species in the ocean lay eggs, otherwise known as mermaid's purses, and they look really cool if you go and check out pictures of them. They come in all different shapes and sizes and they have a sort of leathery appearance to them. The empty egg case that was discovered in 1989, which you can see on your screen now, was pretty unique in that it had a prominent line of ridges along the top of it. They'd found it off the Rowley Shoals, which is a group of atolls on the edge of a continental shelf a few hundred kilometers off the northeast coast of Australia. But the egg case posed more questions than it did answers. What had laid it? Where did it live? And why was the egg case so different to all the others that had been discovered at the time? Fast forward 30 years into the future and the scientists would finally answer the most basic of those questions and discover a new species in the process. Back in 1989, when the egg case was discovered, it had ended up in a museum archive and no one really investigated it any further. But in 2000, 2011, a researcher who was volunteering at that very same museum happened upon the ridged egg case. He noted that it was similar to other egg cases that had been discovered, but none of those shark species that laid those egg cases were native to Australia. He narrowed down the species to possibly being a member of the cat shark family, but couldn't determine it exactly. Almost a decade after this, another team of scientists found the volunteer researchers' notes and decided to probe it a bit further. They knew the egg case had come from a certain depth, somewhere between four and 500 meters. So naturally they started looking for shark species that were being caught at those similar depths. An Australian government agency responsible for scientific research had in their collection a shark species which was caught at those depths, but had been identified at that point as a South China cat shark. And it turned out that this shark specimen was pregnant at the time when it was caught. So the scientists decided to cut it open and have a look inside, as you do. 
But when they did this, they found a developing shark embryo inside an egg case that was exactly the same as the ridged egg case discovered in 1989. The detective work proved decisive as a new species was confirmed, and the mystery that had puzzled those Australian shark scientists for nearly 30 years was finally solved. I actually love that story. It's a classic case of scientific discovery work. And it's a classic case of, hmm, let's chop it up and have a look inside. <laughs> but it gives you an idea of one of the many different ways we can discover a new shark species. Museum archives are a really cool way of finding things like this. And all it takes is a bit of detective work and a scalpel, but it's not the only way. The stereotypical way you'd imagine most deep sea shark species are discovered is by heading out into the ocean and acting accidentally catching one. And that's exactly what happened with our next new species. Back at the end of 2022, researchers were surveying some seabed habitats in Gascoigne Marine Park in Western Australia. During the surveys, they accidentally pulled up a horn shark species with very distinct patterning. The patterning turned out to be pretty similar to an existing horn shark species called the zebra horn shark. Makes sense. Although zebra horn sharks are pretty much exclusively found in shallower waters, and this specimen was found around 150 to 200 meters below the surface. As well as this, zebra horn sharks are normally found near Indonesia and Japan. So it would have been pretty unusual to find it at that depth and in that location. Anyway, it turned out that various museums dotted across Australia had similar specimens stored in their collections. But based on this new depth information and the location at which it was caught, it was concluded that this was actually a new species of horn shark the painted horn shark. The last previous horn shark species to be discovered was back in 2005. So the researchers think that this latest discovery will probably be the last new horn shark species. But they do also say, never say never. Across the Indian Ocean, two new saw shark species were discovered earlier this year as well in a very similar way. One was discovered by a fisherman in Madagascar and another one was caught by a fisherman in Tanzania. Both of these two new saw shark species had six gill slits, which is fairly unusual for sharks, with most having five. The only other known saw shark species in that region that also has six gill slits is Warren's six gill saw shark, which was discovered by English zoologist, you guessed it, Dr. Warren in 1906. They really did know how to name shark species back in the 1900s. <laughs> Fortunately, Dr. Warren at the time decided he was going to send his specimen to the Natural History Museum in London, where it remains in immaculate condition. So the scientists headed over to London to compare their potential two new saw shark species with the one that Warren had sent there over a hundred years ago. It turned out by comparing detailed measurements of the body and taking high resolution photographs with a microscope that they were different. As well as this, the barbels that were found on the rostrum were in a completely different place. And so we now have two more saw sharks species. Kaja's six gill saw shark and Anna's six gill saw shark. Oh my goodness. Six gill saw shark is one of the most difficult things I have ever had to say. And that takes the total number of saw shark species from eight to 10. Although not technically recent, scientists can also use another method to identify new shark species. Back in 2018, scientists in Florida used genetics to identify a new one. Using mitochondrial DNA, the scientists were able to compare six gills found in the Atlantic Ocean with other six gills found in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. And they determined there were enough genetic differences between them to differentiate them into separate species. Which means we now have three species of six gill shark. The blunt nose six gill, the big eye six gill, and the Atlantic six gill. So you can see when it comes to discovering a new species, there's a whole bunch of ways that scientists do it. They can discover new specimens that have accidentally been caught in fisheries or during surveys. They can examine existing specimens from museums and they can sequence their genetic information and compare them to previously known species. It's entirely possible that there are more shark species yet to be discovered in the deep ocean. And not all of them might be as small as these shark species that we've spoken about today. Most of these have been less than a meter in length. Back in 2021, scientists discovered three bioluminescent shark species, one of which can get to nearly six feet long. And it should also be said that it's less than 50 years since researchers discovered a large, strange shark species entangled in the sea anchor of a US Navy ship in Hawaii. That shark was 15 feet long and had never been seen before. It was determined to be a filter feeding shark and was dubbed by shark scientist Leighton Taylor as the Megamouth shark. It's crazy to think that we only discovered the Megamouth mouse shark less than 50 years ago and it does act as a reminder that not all of these shark species that we discover from the deep are going to be small ones. Now if one of you lot in the comments starts to tell me that because of this Megalodon is still alive, 
I am going to lose my shit. So stop it. Mega Mouth Discovery does not equal Megalodon still alive. <laughs> The real question though is how many more shark species are we actually going to discover? If in the last 40 years we've jumped from 360 to 500, can we expect a similar jump in the next 40 years? Well, it's a great question and one that I unfortunately don't have the answer to. I imagine that number could easily go up with the intensity of commercial fishing, new shark species are bound to pop up here and there. As well as this, scientists are now collaborating more than they ever were before, which makes it so much easier easier to identify new sharks. If you can send an email to someone on the other side of the world with a photograph of a potential new shark species, they can get back to you within minutes with their own comparison picture. The ease at which you can now compare these specimens is fundamental to describing new species. Okay, I get that it's not as simple as that, but still, the collaborative effort from shark scientists globally will mean that we discover more. Sadly though, because of the intensity of that commercial fishing that I spoke to you about earlier, we are going to start losing species as well. We recently officially declared the Java stingaree is extinct, and I can think of three other shark or ray species off the top of my head that are pretty close to falling under that category as well. So although we're probably going to gain a few, there's no doubt we're also going to lose a few along the way as well. If you ask for a shark bites prediction on this, I reckon in the next 40 years, we're probably going to have about 550 shark species. Although that's a number that I've literally just plucked out of thin air, so we'll have to wait and see. Okay, that's enough from me then for today. What do you guys make of all these new deep sea shark species? Do you reckon there's loads more down there that we're going to discover? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel by clicking that big red subscribe button. But before you head off, after watching today's episode, if you still think that Megalodon is still alive and kicking around down in our deep ocean, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video right here. It's a bit of an oldie, but in it, I take down some other videos that are claiming Megalodon is still alive today so if you want to watch me get really exasperated on camera then this is the video for you so click it here